Today in Leviticus 5, we see and read about the trespass offering and the guilt offering. The trespass offering was an offering given if you failed to be a faithful witness or you lied in some way, you were a false witness. You somehow also, another thing involved in that was you became ceremonially unclean, ate some unclean food or touched that which was known as unclean. So you had to bring a trespass offering. A third thing for bringing a trespass offering would be you swore a false oath, a careless promise. God, I'll never do that again. And maybe you can fill in the blank of something you've said before, God, I'll never do that again, and you did it. Next we have in Leviticus 5, the guilt offering. You failed, you sinned as it had to do with things sacred or holy, like first fruits or firstborn, the tithe, a vowed offering. You didn't do what was required concerning these things considered holy to the Lord. So now you've got to bring a guilt offering. And Leviticus 5 describes what is acceptable for both of these offerings, the things you have to bring. But Galatians chapter 3 tells us the law was a schoolmaster, a teacher to bring us to Christ. No one could be free of wrong or guilt. The law would constantly point us to our need for Christ, a savior who could remove our trespasses and of course, take away our guilt. The law always reveals our sin. Jesus, our true sin, trespass and guilt offering, takes it away. So here in Leviticus 5, when you're dealing with trespassing and guilt, it points you, if you will, the, the law always points you to our greatest need, a savior, a true sacrifice for our sins, and that's Jesus Christ. So Leviticus chapter five, with all its need for guilt and trespasses to be removed, let it point you to that which only takes it away permanently, the person of Jesus Christ, our true guilt offering and our true trespass offering.